Hey, we're here in High Knoll Park in Langley, uh, out in the mountain bike. Uh, steep hill to go up. When you're going up a steep hill, you got to make sure you use your gears properly. You need to be in your smallest ring, chain ring in the front, called your granny gear, and your biggest cog in the back, and then you'll be able to get up. We talked about how using your gears helps you get up hills here. We're going to look at the gears a little more closely. Right now I have it set in something you wouldn't want to try going up a hill with because I got it in the biggest chain ring at the front and the smallest cog at the back. I want you to count how many times the wheel goes around for one crank of the pedals. So we're going to look right. You follow that valve stem right there. That's once. That's twice. Three times, and four. Okay, that wheel goes around four times for one crank of the pedals. This is really hard to turn because you're turning it through such a long distance. If I change the gears now, I'll put it in the smallest chain ring and the largest cog. We'll see what the difference is. By the way, if you're changing gears in your bike, you want to make sure you're pedaling while you're doing it. Anyways, there we go. Now we got this set up. So we got it in the granny gear here, the small chain ring, largest cog here. Let's do the same thing. Let's follow the valve stem and see how far around it goes for one crank of the pedals. So the crank's gone around one full turn there, and this has only gone about you know two thirds of the way around or so. Okay, that makes it a lot easier. This is a lot easier to pedal here this way. That's what makes it easy to go up the hill. When we were looking at gears on the bike in the garage, at first we had it uh, with the biggest chain ring at the front. That had 44 teeth on it. Okay, if you count the teeth around the side here. And we had that matched with the smallest chain ring, or the smallest cog at the back. That only had 11 teeth on it, that smallest one in there. If you compare those two numbers, okay, if we compare 44 teeth, and we compare that with 11 teeth, first of all, this kind of a comparison mathematics is called a ratio. A ratio. A ratio is a comparison of quantities that have the same unit. Okay, we're comparing teeth to teeth. That's the same unit. So you call it a ratio. If you take that, now I'm pretty sure you can do this without a calculator, but I'm going to write it here first. You can write a ratio with these two dots here like this and compare them uh, like that. Now I've got it pretty far apart, so you can write it 44 to 11. Or you can write it as a fraction, which is also a division, right? 44 over 11. That actually means divide a by, right? Now, if you divide those numbers, I'm pretty sure you know that you get 4, right? You can actually express this ratio in lowest terms. Lowest terms are if you notice that these have a common factor that you can divide them both by something, we can divide them both by 11. You got 4 to 1. Right, you can say it's a 4 to 1 ratio. Now when we looked at it and turned the cranks, you notice the back wheel went around 4 times. For every 1 time, you turn the cranks at the front. That's what makes it so hard to pedal when you have it set up like that. Because for 1 time going around with the cranks, this has to go around 4 times. You're making that thing go around 4 times. If I took that line, this line here and unrolled it, that's a lot of distance around the around the edge of the, the wheel that you're driving that through for one crank. If we look at the other way around here, let's go back to the picture. Uh, once we changed it, we changed it to the smallest chain ring up here. That only had 22 teeth on it. And we had that paired with the largest cog at the back. That on my bike has 34 teeth. 
I wanted the biggest one that you could put on there to try and get up those steep, steep hills. So if you compare those two numbers, now those aren't going to work out as nicely number-wise. Probably not going to be able to do that in our head, but if we're comparing 22 teeth to 34 teeth, right, you can write it like that as a ratio of 22 to 34, or you could write it as a fraction, which is also a division, 22 over 34. If you divide this, this is not going to work out to a nice number. I'm going to put an approximate equal to sign that sign there. I'm going to get my calculator out here too. So if we do 22 divided by 34 there, we're going to get about 0.65. 0.65. Let's round it off roughly. 0.65. Now, when we when we were looking at it, I think I mentioned that it looked like it went about two thirds of the way around. Two thirds, two divided by three. That's pretty close. 0.67. Right. That's a pretty close number there. So that matches what you saw in the in the picture, in, in the video. Now, 44 divided by 11. We said, of course, is four, and that matches what happened. That was four times it took to go around. Now you could put this one into lowest terms too, if you happen to notice that both of these things can be divided by 2. If you divide both of those by 2 in either form, in that form or that form, you can make this 11 and this can be 17. So that's what that one is in lowest terms, right? Or as a, as a fraction or division there, 11 by 17. If you divide those on the calculator, you're going to get exactly the same thing. Right, we had 22 divided by 34 up here was that. If you do 11 divided by 17, you get that exact same number, right? 11 divided by 17, let's do it again here so we can see it. That divided by that, 11 divided by 17, same thing, right? Two ratios or fractions that are equivalent, even though the numbers are different, divide to the same thing. 22 compared to 34 is the same as 11 to 17. If you had your bike set up and you had a tiny little chain ring at the front that had 11 teeth and a cog at the back that had 17 teeth, it would be exactly the same pedaling as it would be as, as hard or easy to pedal as it would be if you had this set up 22 teeth, 34 teeth. The ratio is the same even though the number of teeth is different in both those things. On your bike, sometimes you can. You can uh, you can probably look at your bike and find things that are that are equivalent like that. Uh, I can't quite do it on this bike because I don't have one. This middle chain ring here has 32 teeth on my bike, and if I had my outer chain ring that had 32 teeth, let's pretend for a second it does. It doesn't, but let's pretend it did. So if I match those two things up, that would be exactly the same as if I took my smallest chain ring with 22 teeth and a cog somewhere in the middle here that had 22 teeth. Even though your bike might say that it has 27 speeds or 24 speeds or something like that, some of them are the same or very similar just because of the ratios. There isn't actually 27 different gears on the thing. There's 20 different, 27 different ways to combine them, but some of them are going to be, they're going to overlap. Because if you have 32 to 32, it's going to be exactly the same as 22 to 22. Right? You can use ratios to compare and predict whether they're going to be hard or easier somewhere in the middle. Right? That's gear ratios on bikes.